Hi folks, the Filipino Bee here, telling it like it is. Well, after two years of isolation, our borders are finally opening up, and a lot of you guys are considering coming to visit, as images of white sand beaches and smiling faces dance through your heads. But is that a realistic expectation? Have things returned to normal here, or are those smiling faces going to be covered by masks? Maybe you've been here before, and you want to relive some of those memories, but it's not going to be the same as what you remembered, because the Philippines hasn't quite returned to its full glory yet. So it's only fair to give you folks an accurate report about things on the ground here, to help you manage your expectations, and decide if now is a good time to plan your trip. If you're coming to meet a specific person, like a girlfriend or a wife that you've been separated from, it might be worth all the hassle and annoyances. But if you're coming to enjoy the nightlife and meet Filipinas, you might be in for a rude awakening. You're gonna have to wear a face mask when you go out of the house, and you're gonna get squirted, dusted, and sprayed almost everywhere you go. You'll constantly be passing through checkpoints at almost all buildings and businesses where you have to present your VAX card and your ID. And you're gonna get so sick of filling out health forms that you might wish you just stayed in bed. And I'm not saying it's not worth it, but you need to know all the facts first. So here's what you can expect once you hit the ground. So you just landed in the Philippines. Now what? Well, it really depends on why you came. If you're coming to meet the Filipina you've been chatting with online, or be reunited with a wife or family, then no problem. She's probably going to meet you at the airport anyway, and chances are, you two will be inseparable for the duration of your stay. Anyone who knows anything about Filipinas can tell you that we typically smother you with attention. And we really don't like you looking at other women like some kid in a candy store. So the virus is actually a blessing in disguise for us Filipinas. It lets us keep tabs on you by reducing your temptation level. You're probably going to need your Filipina just to get around. And we love being useful. Locking you up arm in arm. Never more than a step away. Always within sight. Yep, we Filipinas love that. And if you're coming to see a particular person, you're probably not going to care what's open or closed. You just want to be with her. And an evening of Netflix and chill is just as good as any bungee jumping adventure that she's not going to want to do anyway. But what if you're coming here solo? You've been watching my videos and you've become mesmerized by the siren song of the Filipina and you're eager to test the waters. Well, here's where it's going to get tricky. Anywhere you go in public, you're gonna have to wear a mask. It's no big deal, but they hide people's facial expressions, which are just as important as the eyes. It's really hard to know what someone's thinking or how they're reacting to you when three-fourths of their face is covered. Now, if I was walking around the mall like this, and we passed each other and exchanged glances, you couldn't really tell what I was thinking because a mask takes away the Filipinas' biggest weapon. Those quick, flirty little smiles we use to show you we might be interested. So you're gonna have to resort to either meeting us in restaurants and coffee shops where everyone can take their masks off or else use online resources like Tinder, which is considered a legitimate dating site here in the Philippines. It's still possible it's just not as easy. Anywhere that people are walking around in masks, it's gonna be really difficult to interact. And during these times of pandemic, if you don't have a Filipina guide, it's gonna be a lot harder to get around. Right now isn't exactly the best time to explore the Philippines. And one of the things that may frustrate you the most is just finding out what businesses are open. Lots of businesses still say they're open when you Google them, but a lot of the time, 
those businesses are either operating on restricted hours or closed altogether. And you won't find out until you go there in person and see the closed sign on the door. Why don't they update their websites? Maybe laziness? Apathy? Who knows? Even in the best of times, this is a constant problem here. But now, it's gotten 10 times worse. I pity the travelers who's trying to figure out where to go eat. Because no matter what place looks good, You've got at best about a 50-50 chance of them being closed when they say they're open. And you can spend hours driving around from place to place until you finally just head back to your hotel room and raid the minibar. Now you might say, well, I'll just call them and see if they're open. Simple, right? <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, you Westerners and your newfangled ideas. Good luck with that. As anyone who's lived here can tell you, even a business that's open rarely answers your phone. It's like they regard basic phone service as an optional luxury. And even when they have one, they don't use it. Why make it easy for customers to find you? That's Western thinking. So be prepared to waste a lot of time just figuring out where to go. Well, the malls are all open, but everything else is a hit or miss. And every time you try to enter a business, an office building, a restaurant, pretty much anything, you're going to have to run the dreaded gauntlet of sprays. I was in a hotel in Cebu a few days ago, and this was the protocol you had to follow every time you entered. First, you have to fill out your health declaration form with your name, address, bra size, and then you gotta spray your hands with disinfectant. After that, you're confronted by the talking thermometer that decides if you're fit to pass. Finally, you gotta walk through this tunnel where your whole body gets sprayed again with something. And yes, you have to do that every time you walk outside and back in again. At almost every business, even the grocery store, there's going to be an armed guard at the door who's going to spray your hands with liquid that sometimes smells suspiciously like chlorine, which I'm allergic to. Then he'll take your temperature and swipe your QR code before you're allowed to enter. And when you try to sit down for a meal, your table will be sprayed with futuristic equipment that looks like it came from a Star Wars movie. But nothing, nothing beats the fun you'll have at the airport. When I got off the plane, I literally got crop dusted by a guy in a hazmat suit. I don't know what was in the spray can, and I knew I better not ask. Just close your eyes, turn your head away, and hope it doesn't shoot up your nose. I'm not really into putting powder up my nose anyway, but if I did, it wouldn't be that. Then you'll get to fill out another round of even longer health forms that take a while to complete. But the fun's not over yet because then you get to wait in a line that moves even slower than Filipino time so that each form can be manually reviewed and carefully checked line by line. Finally, you're free to leave the building and onto your next hosing down somewhere else. And remember folks, this was just a local airport. So even after you make it into the country, traveling around inside the Philippines is no picnic either. But let's say that none of that stuff deters you. You're happy to go through all that just so you can enjoy all the Philippines has to offer. But what does the Philippines have to offer right now? Well, if you're looking for nightlife, I'm sad to say that there's not a lot of it. Many places just couldn't survive two years of shutdowns, alcohol bans, restricted hours, and no foreigners throwing money around. In Cebu, there's an 11 o'clock citywide curfew, which is kind of an early night if you want to go out partying. Mango Square was the hub of Cebu's nightlife, but what used to be an area filled with bars, tourists, and yes, Filipinas, is now more like a ghost town. Planet X, a popular club where many Westerners went to party and meet women, is boarded up and permanently closed, 
along with several other bars that apparently just gave up and went home. My favorite Irish pub, Marshall's, used to be filled to capacity every night with live music and happy people. But now the place is shut down and abandoned, never to return. Another popular place, Cubana, used to be so busy that you couldn't find a seat. And although it's technically still open, it hasn't recovered from strict protocols and years of shutdowns. At least one little food vendor is still hanging on, with menu items appropriately named for the area. Not even the recent natural disaster managed to shut their doors. A huge super typhoon ripped through the country less than two months ago, destroying a lot of infrastructure and making it even harder to get parts of the Philippines up and running again. The good news is that the damage was confined to a relatively small part of the country, and things are slowly returning to normal, even in the places that were hardest hit. Give us a couple more months and in most places, it'll be hard to tell we even had a typhoon. So that's my report for you folks. If you're coming here to be with a partner, come on in, relax, enjoy, but don't plan on doing a lot. If you're coming here by yourself, you might want to wait until the economy comes back, places reopen, and you don't have to get squirted, sprayed, and dusted every 10 feet. Or you can listen to that nagging little voice in your head telling you that happiness is waiting for you just over the horizon. And if you don't hurry, all the good Filipinas will be taken. The happiness part is true, but we'll never run out of Filipinas. Well, thanks for joining me today. And I'll be back in a few days with something fun. Till next time, folks. Good evening, world. Filipina P reporting. The sudden opening of the borders and the imminent arrival of thousands of foreigners has brought joy to the hearts of many men and dread to the hearts of many Filipinas, who realize they now have to choose between their Western boyfriends and their local husbands. The foreigners are about to find out if that $300 a month they've been sending was money well spent. A support group for those affected by the impending relationship tragedies has been set up to handle the aftermath. In other news, as Filipinas flood the local pharmacies and convenience stores, shortages of large-sized condoms have caused concern among suppliers who struggle to keep up with the stiff demand. Maternity wards across the country are gearing up as well, as local hospitals race to hire obstetricians in advance of the expected need for their services realizing they have only nine months and two weeks to do so. In Dumaguete, several Filipino YouTubers have been seen digging what looked to be fallout shelters in their backyards in an apparent attempt to shield themselves from the impending assault. And that's all the news that's not the news here in the Philippines. This has been Reporter P, and may your tomorrow be twice as bright as half of you deserve. If you think about it, I'm kind of like your own personal genie. Every week, I fulfill two of your wishes when I bring you magical content about life and culture in the Philippines and explain the differences between East and West. If you appreciate my efforts, all I ask is that you hit the thumbs up button on this video, subscribe to my channel, and tap the notification bell so you can see what I've conjured up next. And if you're really feeling like a generous master, feel free to share this video with friends and visit my Patreon page as well. And now, for that third wish, you have only to ask, and it's my pleasure to make it come true. Uh, what did you wish for? Master. I don't think I can do that, and Mrs. Master would not be happy about it. <coughs>